We're just gonna dive right into unit 13. And th unit 13 is divided into two subunits, 13A and 13B. Okay, so when you hear anybody say the Arizona Strip, I got a strip tag, or I wish I could draw a strip tag, or man, or whatever, the strip is so amazing, et cetera, et cetera, they're talking about units 13A and 13B. What makes the strip so amazing? Um, it is basically a genetic isolation chunk of land, and by chunk I mean two million acres, uh, that's basically all BLM, um, and nobody lives there. So it's two, mil two million acres that nobody inhabits for the most part, and it borders the Utah, it borders Utah, and the Grand Canyon is, is its southern boundary. So the Grand Canyon, by its nature, um, prevents a whole lot of movement south, um, north or south. So the Grand Canyon pretty much locks up the southern border. So these deer that live up there and these giant sage rolling just hills and 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 cuts and uh, all that that country that's uh, no, makes up of northern Arizona is uh, really really creates mature deer. Uh, just because number one, there's not a whole lot of access. Um, the most, for the most part, guys that hunt it come in, they drive up through Las Vegas and they drive around and come in down, uh, from Utah. Okay. So isolation is number one, guys. These deer just don't have a lot of people. They don't have a lot of pressure. Um, there's not a lot of access period. It's all public too. It's like one of the least visited parts of the state's most remote part of Arizona, um, you know, from an access standpoint. There's a few more remote places that I know of that uh, are really remote just from a uh, you know, rocky mountainous kind of terrain unable to pass type situation where as the strip, it's it's actually relatively pretty easy uh, country to drive and, and, and move around in. Um, it's just so remote. I mean, there's not any gas stations, there's not any stores, there's not any cities, uh, sometimes for hours from where you're hunting. So that's why these deer get so big uh, is because they just don't get a lot of pressure. And part of that reason is because Arizona does not give out a lot of tags. So when you don't have a lot of tags, you by nature do not have a lot of pressure. So in 13A and 13B, there's a total of 30 archery tags. Okay, so you do the math, 2 million acres, 30 archery tags. Um, that's not a whole lot of deer getting shot in that big piece of land that we're hunting. So um, if you're a bow hunter and you wanna throw your chips in and, and kind of a once in a lifetime or maybe twice in a lifetime, depending on when you started, um, that tag, that archery tag for the strip 13A and 13B is just amazing. Uh, some of the biggest bucks ever in the history of mule deer have been killed out of that and on that hunt. Um, these deer in velvet are just giant and they're pretty lazy and they're pretty predictable and they're pretty patternable. They're hitting water and they're hitting feed and they're just kind of lounging around. Um, and which makes it a pretty good setup for a bow hunter. Um, it, that, that's just something to keep in mind. If you're, if you want to go that route, if you're an archery only guy, um, what's the difference between 13 A and B? Um, you know, uh, 13B has gotten a lot, a lot of credit last few years. It's produced some giant bucks, some governor's tag bucks. Um, but 13A as well, I mean, really, um, you're splitting hairs for the most part. 13A is accessed a little bit easier. Um, and a little, it's, and by access, it means it's scouted. Big bucks are found a little bit quicker. Um, everybody kind of knows about them. Now that the camera law is in effect, um, I think there's going to be a few more bigger bucks that slip by um, from year to year, and, and you might see some absolute giants um, rolling around. Anyway, 13A and 13B, um, if you're going to choose one, uh, it's always my recommendation to choose 13B first choice, just simply because of the history behind it. Um, really, the actual antler growth differs from year to year, but 13B has historically produced the bigger deer. And again, it, it, we're talking like, you know, a, not that big of a deal. Um, we're kind of splitting hairs with 200 inch deer are uh, very common. And uh, especially with good rain years and 250 inch deer are not uncommon. So uh, there's a number of deer that are taken over the 230 mark every year. 
and a handful taken over that 250 inch mark. Um, so either way, guys, it's it's the odds are as a non-resident really incalculable. Uh, you really don't have a free bonus point pass for any Arizona strip tag. I hate to break it to you. Um, as a non-resident, um, even with max points, um, there are still several max point holders as non-residents. And so it's still a flip of the coin. You got to get lucky um, either way because uh, we only give out 10% of tags in Arizona. So when you're talking about 30 total archery tags for the strip, that means three go to non-residents. So really... I mean, with five guys with max points, you're still like, you know, your odds are, are about 50% uh, drop one of those tags. So same goes for rifle as well. So rifle, they only give out uh, 50 and 60. I think this year, I think, um, I, I want to say offhand, uh, a total number of uh, less than 100 tags total. So I want to say, 65 tags and like 35 tags. So close to 100 tags total, meaning as a non-resident, only 10 tags are allotted. And uh, out of those 10 people, you know, there's more people with max points than are um, just 10. You know, there's more than 10 people, if that makes sense. So you're not guaranteed. So that's basically my sad sob story for you as a non-resident that have been waiting all your life and then they changed it a few years ago and you lost half of your bonus point leverage um, into some of these strip areas and big hunts like the Kaibab. You can still get drawn in the random draw, obviously. Um, it is still very much, uh, if you have 20 plus points, guys, you gotta, you gotta still swing for the fences. I'm not saying you you lay up and you draw some general tag somewhere um, that's not worth it. Um, you know, you want to still draw a tag where 200 inches is a reality, a 30 inch, 200 inch deer is a reality. And, and the Kaibab and the Strip still offer that. So um, in these rifle tags, uh, there is quite a bit of pressure. Uh, you believe it or not, even with as few tags as are allotted, um, everybody and their neighbor and then some are out there looking for these giant deer and hoping to find that, uh, you know, that magazine cover deer from year to year. So um, there will be some pressure. I highly suggest uh, speaking with an outfitter or guide that has hunted there, uh, not just last year, but for 10 years plus, honestly, the Arizona Strip is one of those areas where um, there's a handful of outfitters that have been guiding there uh, for 30, 40 years and have been killing deer for a long time. And those are the guys that I personally would talk to. And just so you have a, a reference point, um, in my opinion, um, I'm not going to say anybody's name, uh, you know, out here. If you guys want information, you draw a tag, hit me up. Um, I'm free to give my opinion. Uh, for what it's worth. But if I do draw a strip tag, I will be hiring an outfitter. So it takes so much time and so much gas um, and so much scouting and so much prep that I really don't have time for. Uh, number one, for me, I'm usually in Alaska hunting moose in August and September, doll sheep, moose, and grizzly. And then on odd numbers years, I'm hunting uh, October Peninsula brown bear. So I really don't personally have a lot of time to scout that's necessary that does that hunt justice. And I, and for a lot of you guys, I'm sure that's the case too. So I would consider if you draw this tag, really start trying to break down your time that you can do and uh, also your budget and really with gas prices and just kind of that kind of stuff, really in the end, um, you know, a lot of these guys that guide up there and outfit up there, believe it or not, don't make a whole lot of money if they make any money at all. They really do it for the love of the game. And uh, they've got more money in scouting and paying guides and spotters than really they do if you pay them for a hunt. They just kind of want to be a part of it. They want to do it. Um, and that's the inside information I have on the strip, guys. So nobody's getting rich up there. Um, everybody's looking for the giant buck. And uh, if you draw the tag, if you're one of those lucky p people um, that won the lottery, uh, congratulations. Talk to some guys. Hit me up anytime. Um, I've got my information linked um, in the description below. Feel free to text me or call me or whatever. Email me, hit me up on Instagram. Um, I'm on it semi-frequently, and uh, especially if I'm not uh, up in Alaska chasing stuff around. So um, that's the strip, guys. That's Arizona Strip. You can, you're in unit 13A, 13B, archery and rifle rundown. Um, it is a fantastic opportunity to kill a once-in-a-lifetime deer. So good luck. Um, hit me up. Don't be afraid to ask questions or leave comments uh, below and uh, myself or hey, some random dude that is online, he'll 
he'll look and answer some questions too. So you never know who can come out of the woodwork and help you um, answer questions too, guys. So good luck out there. We'll talk to you soon.